What's up guys, real quick, uh, before this video gets started, uh, I, in my continuing infinite wisdom, I forgot to mention why I'm posting this Patreon-only content to YouTube publicly. Uh, the reason why is because if you were considering signing up for Patreon and you wanted to know exactly what the monthly vlog is going to be like, I cut out this specific, it's about a third of the first episode, um, and it will be the only time I ever do this, but it's just to kind of give you an example of what you can expect. So that's what the purpose of this video is. That's why it's public. Back to the video. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Josh, and this, uh, I'm in the middle of an edit for episode one of what is going to be a monthly Patreon uh, video. And I wanted to have a big perk that wasn't just early access being uh, a monthly kind of uh, behind the scenes, what's going on in my life, personal update type of stuff. I wanted to have like one 20 to 30 minute episode uh, a month uh, for you guys who are patrons. So thank you very much who are patrons. Now this portion of the, the video is kind of behind the scenes stuff. And I think when you're watching videos like this about how people do what they do, it's very easy to get kind of involved in the gear that they have or, you know, the lens, the type of lighting. And that's kind of some of the stuff that I'm talking about here and we'll continue to talk about in future episodes of this. But I also think it's important to let you know my stance on it and tell you, you know, ahead of time that it's not all about the gear. Um, in fact, it rarely is all about the gear. Now, my stance on gear is that while gear is not everything and it's only a small portion of a story or a video, I do think that it can add to the lasting effect of the, that, the impression of that video, essentially. They have to work hand in hand. So I, I wanna get that clear and kind of let you know my stance on it and also tell you that like this gear, it's acquired over time. It's not bought, you know, all in one. I'm not hella rich. I don't have heck of money to blow on stuff. A lot of the things I use, like this, uh, like what I bring up, this Ikea or uh, Target um, plant was like $7. I use it in a ton of scenes just because it adds a little bit of green, a little bit of color, but it's $7, right? It's cheap. It's a, it's a budget thing that adds a little bit of context and you just get a few things here and there that can really help you out. All right, guys, without any, any more talking, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the... Uh, this type of stuff. Okay, so I do a few key things when I'm kind of recording here, and hopefully you can't hear the lens noise because I have the camera or the microphone pointed backwards towards me, and uh, the lens does make like a slight clicking noise um, while it's in autofocus mode, so hopefully it's not too big of an issue. Okay, so I do a couple things, and you may have even noticed a couple things um, when I'm filming. And I use a couple different techniques depending on the look I want to go for. Sometimes I really want a dramatic look, more filmy. Sometimes I want uh, a more techie look, something like that. So for today's demonstration, I focused on a techie look. So you'll notice that the lights are pointed upwards. And there's a very good reason why. Um, one of the filming problems that I actually run into is my ugly ceiling it's like one of the popcorn ceilings but one of the things that the popcorn ceilings especially if they're painted white are super super good at is actually diffusing light so it creates between these two lights they create this awesome kind of overall lighting for any product and if you have a like just look at that i mean that just looks that just looks amazing right it's super clean um, it's actually a lot darker in here though, than it appears to be. Um, I'll kind of bring the camera settings down to where it is about in real life. Uh, it's probably about that dark. So this is at ISO 160. Um, and then I actually have to bump it up all the way to ISO about 800 is where I'm at now to get, uh, this kind of light look. Now it looks very good, right? Like the whites aren't blown out, but the shadows aren't too dark either. And that's kind of the point. Um, that's really what you get with diffuse lighting. You get really even light. So what diffuse lighting is, is basically there's two major types of light. There are soft lights and there are hard lights. Let's see if I can bring out an example, actually. You know, Star Wars is the original four, five, and six were as impactful as they were, not because of the story, but because of the story and the visuals. They were incredibly groundbreaking at the time. So I think gear, it does matter. Um, anybody who says that gear doesn't matter at all is lying to you. The thing is that it falls somewhere in that spectrum of, of not being important at all and being the most important thing. Uh, it's somewhere in the middle where it is important, but it's not everything. 
You can have a great story, but if you don't have great visuals to back it up, you're limiting what that story can tell and how that story can be displayed. Not to say it's a bad story or that it's a bad video or a bad movie, but when you have great visuals to back up a great story, you have the perfect combination there. Okay, so I was gonna totally uh, show you this light because um, I got these little RGB lights and I dropped it and that's not good. It broke. <laughs> so I'll show you something else. So I have, um, uh, actually I'll show you with my phone. How about that? All right. So as you can see, my phone light is on, right? Looks, looks super cool. Okay. Um, so this is a hard light. And the reason why this is a hard light is because that light source is coming from a very finite point compared to this, right? Like this compared to that, a lot more finite. Now it's not necessarily about brightness. It's more about where the angles of the light are coming from. So as you can see, there's some pretty hard shadows coming from the uh, this little plant. <laughs> and that's not good. That's not necessarily what you want unless you're searching for that look. This is more of a dramatic look, kind of like a spotlight, and this is called hard light. Now, generally speaking, now there are, there are no static rules in film. There's creative uh, creativity involved in everything. Uh, but generally speaking, you're going to want soft light for almost every situation. It looks better unless, of course, you're specifically going for the hard light. So you really want to diffuse your light. Now, you can get a medium-sized softbox like this. Um, I think it's probably about, I don't know, probably about 24 inches by 24 inches. Um, it's a nice square. creates a, a beautiful light for, for photos and even for video. And it's better than hard light by a long shot. Then you have an octo box like this, which is 48 by 48, and that's even bigger, and that's gonna create a much softer light than that will, although that is pretty soft, and it sounds like UPS is here. And then you've got the ceiling, which is the greatest soft box of all because it bounces light off this entire surface, and the addition of, of the angles of like the popcorn ceiling kind of makes it uh, even more diffuse and makes light come from every direction to light things evenly. Now, I'm not trying to turn this into like a lighting session or anything like that, but it is one of the few tricks that I use to get the results that I get. And yeah, so we're going to go ahead and move on to props now. Now, I have another example of why visuals are important. Throughout cinema history, there have been a number of very vicious bear attack scenes, right? Like lots of, of animal attacks, lots of bear attacks, lots of run-ins with a bear. And even as a film guy, like I'm a huge film buff, I can only think of one bear scene that is particularly standing out in my mind. And it's specifically because the story was wrapped around the bear scene and the bear scene was visually stimulating. And that scene was from The Revenant. If you haven't seen that, it's it's pretty incredible. Okay, so I'm gonna make a, a pretty basic scene in terms of what you would end up seeing from uh, like my channel, right? I'm gonna kind of build it for you. Now, one of the ways that I like to to kind of spice things up, depending on what I'm going for, sometimes I want a super clean look where, let's say this is the only thing I want in the in the um, in the image. So I'll do this, and then I'll I'll get that type of stuff out of the film or out of the view, and then I'll just focus on this one product, right? And there's nothing else to the side. You got the table. Obviously, I wouldn't leave the light there, but this is just for example. But a lot of things that spice things up are just little added, um, little knickknacks, like this plant I bought it at Target. It was like seven dollars. Um, this planner that I actually use, it's a nice looking kind of like cheap planner that I used, and you know, it's something that can add kind of a little bit of spiciness to a a scene, right? It's going to add a little bit of texture, a little bit of interesting kind of. Um, I don't know, it's just something that's not so boring, but still really clean. I also used, I use this mouse, but I like the blue on it. I like the text. So sometimes I'll lay it in the background, something like that. And it just adds like a little bit of blue in the background. So these are, I mean, that's, that's a box of something that I use, you know, just as a nice looking box. That was like $5. I've got like an Xbox controller because who doesn't have one of those? And then, you know, cheap a cheap plant and I could literally make an entire like an entire b-roll sequence for an entire video like a 20 minute video off of these few props just using different angles you just have to be creative with your angles then that is just so that I can clean either the surface or the headphones if there's dirt or uh, dust or anything like that 
that I don't want, that's what the rag's for. Um, and then, you know, I'm fortunate enough to, I mean, desk looks like a mess right now, but I'm fortunate enough to have other headphones at my disposal that I can also use for background shots. So that's useful. Um, and then, you know, having a, a cheap desk, something like this, nicely colored wall, doesn't have to be gray, it could be white, it could be red, it could be blue, it could be whatever color. And something really clean and simple is going to give you that really techy look that a lot of people are going for right now. Um, and you really just have to be creative with the lights. Now, here's the thing about these lights. Now, these, these light, I'm operating with what I have, right? I acquired this stuff over years of buying it. That's like a, a C stand for overhead shots. Actually, it's set up right now for overhead shots. Um, and I, I acquired these over time. You don't have these right away. So when I didn't have things uh, or a lot of money, I used a lot of these lights. Now, these lights are RGB lights. They go, you know, red, green, blue, obviously, and everywhere in between, kind of. And uh, they're cheap. They're like $8. So when I broke it earlier, again, <laughs> making heck of noise, um, it's not that big of a deal. But it yields a good result. Um, and I use that basically because it creates a bright white. I would basically reflect that off the ceiling and use kind of what I had at my disposal to create a nice, soft light. Um, and that just depends on what, what I'm going for though. If I want to create a more dramatic look, I'll go ahead and set that up and show you exactly what that would look like here. And my last example of why visuals and story have to tie in together is the movie Gravity and the movie Interstellar. Now, you may have your personal preference. I have mine. I love Interstellar. It's actually one of, if not my favorite movie ever. The reason why I love it so much is because even though Gravity, I think, is a better well, it's different, but it's graphically it's better. It looks a little bit more realistic than the the Christopher Nolan interpretation in Interstellar. But where Gravity really lacked for me was story. Story is paramount to the success and impact of a movie to a degree. Matter because Interstellar still looks amazing. Um, it, it's it's a beautiful movie made with a lot of realistic props. It's awesome for that. It ties in together, and it's really successful when those beautiful visuals are met with a beautiful story. Gravity had beautiful visuals, but it didn't have the beautiful story, or at least it wasn't very well told. And that's where gravity doesn't carry a lot of weight. Haha, <laughs> gravity science puns. Uh, it doesn't carry a lot of weight with me. Okay, so I turned off that box and I re-angled this to, I mean, it's a little bright right now, but I'll turn it down in a second. And I re-adjusted this to be it's, it's still considered a soft diffused light, but it's it's harsher and it's not coming from multiple angles. So it's coming from one angle. So there's going to be a little bit of shadow on this side. Let's just go ahead and tone that down to, I don't know, ISO 160. There we go. That looks all right. Maybe a little, maybe a little less. ISO 125. Okay. So now I'm going to build basically a dramatic scene for this type of light. It's still well lit but it's going to be a little bit more dramatic, a little less techy. Um, but it's going to kind of be in between like a, a dramatic look and a tech look because of, of the surface that it's on and the gray background. It's still always going to have that techish look to it. Um, but then if you want to use a more film look, you would use like wood or some of the more earthy tone colors and, uh, you know, earthy tone type of, of things. Okay. So let's go ahead and build this real quick. Uh, so it's literally super simple. I'm going to use the same framing as I used before. I'm just going to kind of clear the background a little bit. I'm going to move this out and then I'm going to back that C stand up. Okay. And then I just move the C stand out of frame, adjust this. This is going to give us a very dramatic look. Um, it's still kind of well lit and it's very focused on the subject, right? But it's just a different type of look using the same tools. And that's really what being a video creator or a filmmaker is all about. It's it's utilizing the tools to the best of your ability. But it's also important for me to say that this type of stuff, this knowledge, it's useful to have, but it's only a small part of making good videos. And good videos are usually defined by story and the or the information that you're giving. So since I do tech videos, I instead of story, because you can't really have a story with a tech video or at least a review, I have to compensate with good information instead of my story. 
So that's something that I, I strive for and something that I try and do. Um, but that's going to come down to your personal kind of opinion on what you like and the stories that you want to tell. But don't always think it's about technicality because technicalities and good looking video definitely helps, but it isn't everything. I hope this helped. If you want to sign up for Patreon, there's a link down below. I appreciate all of you guys. As of right now on Patreon, I, I spend all the money on shipping because I, I ship out a lot of items uh, back to their owners every month and I have to properly insure them and stuff like that. Anyways, eventually we'll get to a point where I can start buying headphones with the Patreon money and reviewing them and then eventually speakers, hopefully, and hopefully it'll snowball. Uh, but yeah, I'm Josh. Thanks for watching. I'm going to hop out of here.